So I'm going to come back up uh, and restate some of this paragraph. And while we cannot claim perfection of the flesh, we may have Christian perfection of the soul. Through the sacrifice made in our behalf, sins may be perfectly forgiven. Our dependence is not in what man can do. It is in what God can do for man through Christ. When we surrender ourselves wholly to him and fully believe, the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. The conscience can be freed from condemnation. Through faith in his blood, all may be made perfect in Christ Jesus. Thank God that we are not dealing with impossibilities. We may claim perfection. We may claim sanctification. We may enjoy the favor of God. We are not to be anxious about what Christ and God think of us, but about what God thinks of Christ, our substitute. Ye are accepted in the Beloved. The Lord shows to the repenting, believing one that Christ accepts the surrender of the soul to be molded and fashioned after his own likeness. This is in Second Selected Messages, page 32, paragraph 3. Um, back up where it says we may claim sanctification. Um, it therefore follows that we may also claim perfection. But we need to be careful how we understand that. This is not holy flesh. Um, holy flesh only comes when Christ comes and we have our new bodies. So when we're trying to discern truth, we need to ask ourselves, are they teaching this? This is found in Romans chapter 8 and 1 John chapter 1. And if people are teaching this, then this is a gospel that can include anyone because Christ died for all of us. Um, or are they teaching it in a way that excludes anybody and that adds rule upon rule upon rule that isn't in the Bible um, in a way that makes it uh, um, impossible for anyone to meet uh, what's being presented. So we are teaching a gospel of a conscience that can be freed from condemnation, that all are made perfect in Christ Jesus. So as we're learning to discern truth in what's being presented and how it's presented, um, let's turn to Second Selected Messages, page 33, paragraph 1. In his life on earth, Christ could have made disclosures which would have eclipsed and assigned to oblivion all human dis discoveries. He could have opened the door. He could have opened door after door to mysterious things and many revelations of eternal realities would have been the sure result. He could have uttered words which would have been as a key to unlock mysteries that would have captivated the minds of generations to the close of time. But Christ does not open the numerous doors at which human curiosity has been striving to obtain entrance. He does not spread for men a feast that would prove deleterious to their, higher, their highest interests. He came to plant for men, not the tree of knowledge, but the tree of life. There are awesome things about the tree of knowledge. There are awesome things that science has found um, in medical and um, the psychiatric community and uh, all kinds of other sciences that are available. I mean, in our generation, they've gone to the moon and back a number of times. Um, Christ could have opened these and many other truths to our knowledge, but he didn't because we needed to know how to participate in the tree of life. So as we embrace knowledge and truth, which is very important, 
we also need to be embracing the tree of life at the same time. We need to be careful how we embrace truth. So, reading on, I have been instructed to say to those in Indiana who are advocating strange doctrines, you are giving a wrong mold to the precious and important work of God. Keep within the bounds of the Bible. Take Christ's lessons and repeat them over and over again. Remember that the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace, James 3, 17 and 18. This is paragraph 2. So we need to understand for ourselves what is really being taught in the Bible. We need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. These things will guard our heart and our head in the times ahead because we find that many things are being misrepresented or taught falsely on both the liberal and the conservative side of, of every truth in the Bible and every truth that there is. So how are we going to do that? We need to remember the caution not to give a wrong mold to the precious and important work of God the precious and important work of God is the process of salvation and how God works. We need to keep within the bounds of the Bible. It's okay if we find new truths that seem to be uh, a little different, but we still need to come back to staying within the bounds of the Bible. That is a foundation, a safeguard, and we need to come back to taking Christ's lessons and repeating them over and over again. We need to come back to understanding correctly righteousness by faith and Christian perfection of the soul, the salvation, the freedom, and freedom of conscience, of our conscience that's been freed from condemnation. We need to understand that we are made perfect in Jesus. And as we understand these things, then we can come back and embrace this paragraph here. When human beings receive holy flesh, they will not remain on the earth, but will be taken to heaven. While sin is forgiven in this life, its results are not now wholly removed. It is at his coming that Christ is to change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Philippians 3, verse 21. This is a source of hope for us. We may have human frailties uh, caused by age, caused by our life before we came to Jesus or understood certain truth. While sin is forgiven in this life, its results are not now wholly removed, but we have faith of a total change in our body when Christ comes and we receive a glorious body. So the time that we receive holy flesh is when Jesus comes, when the dead are raised to life and those who are alive on the earth are also raised to life. And we, 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 we receive a new body, a body that hasn't been affected by disease or sin or the environment and the toxins in the environment or any number of other things that we experience in our life now. So in closing, uh, I would like to uh, refer you to a couple of resources on the Awaken Ministries site. These are studies, uh, the, face, the uh, YouTube page where um, I found some strong positive foundations uh, that have helped guide me. Um, one is you can turn to the playlist called um, foundations for fellowship and you will find their information on the, pro the gathering, the prophecy charts and 
several other important things to consider. Uh, the studies on Joel were also helpful. The studies on a, a Jehu spirit were helpful to me. Um, and also uh, the studies on surviving the fellowship and foundations for service. Those were all very important for me and um, they might be things you're interested in studying. Um, also, I can't take credit for um, understanding uh, this chapter uh, on the Holy Flesh in Selected Messages Book 2. I first learned and came to understand about this uh, many years ago, probably some 40 years ago, in a prayer meeting by Bill W. Lehman at the Loma Linda Campus Hill Church. And I don't think that that series of studies is available to the public. I don't know that it's been recorded or survived the uh, tape type of recording that they did back then. But uh, that was where I first learned about this. And I have since seen that uh, the Holy Flesh Doctrine occurs with or without music. It occurs on many levels in both religious and secular society. And it, this also occurs the opposite way where people say, well, I'm going to be saved in all my sins. I can just have an excuse. And either way, if we err either way, it prevents us from uh, seeing the truths in the Bible clearly and also seeing Jesus clearly. And we see this in the polarization that exists in the world today. And it's a dangerous polarization that uh, is, I fear, leading to serious consequences in the world. So, um, but on a positive note, I close with prayer. Thank you for... Uh